Hi guys, how are you? Welcome back to Real Macroeconomics and Investing. Uh, welcome to Trading View, Patreon, my subscribers, and YouTube. All right, I'm going to teach you macroeconomics, the monetary system, and finance and investing in 20 minutes. You think I can do it? Less than 20 minutes because I'm talking. <laughs> All right, I'm going to try to fit four years plus into less than 20 minutes. So let's get started. First of all, let's get some definitions down. You, you've heard Buffett say price is what you pay, value is what you get. This is vitally important. Do not confuse price with value. Okay? In macroeconomics, I'm going to teach you the difference between price and value. Before we get there, let's get some other things out of the way. What is an economy? It's very simple. You go out, you work, you innovate, you produce, you consume. That's an economy. It's very simple. There's nothing complicated about that. The more productive, innovative, and hardworking an economy is, the bigger it becomes. You don't go out to work, you don't innovate, there's no economy, right? So everything is based on very simple concept. It's not hard for anybody to understand this. Now, government issues dollar, coins, digits, whatever you want to call them, doesn't matter, any economy in the world, there is a medium unit of measure that the government is a custodian of. They make sure it's not counterfeited. They make sure everybody pays their taxes as they should, more or less. Okay? It's the custodian of the medium unit of measure used to facilitate transactions within the economy. That's it. If an economy grows by 3% and the government deficit spends 3%, that deficit, those digits created by government are fully valued. Why? Because there's 3% more economy to value those digits. Not hard, not hard to understand. If on the other hand, the government deficit spends 10% and the economy grows at 1%, it has technically defaulted, okay? By my definition, it has technically defaulted. Because that extra 9% of deficits to GDP is not valued with the equal amount of economic growth. Okay? It's not hard. Very simple. Now, when a dollar is created, you're always going to think that it doesn't matter if it's from a bank, right? Banks create the vast majority of dollars. It doesn't matter if it comes from government, okay? All money is money. And whenever there is a debt, there has to be an asset. There's a debt, there's an asset, okay? Remember that. Every dollar that is created will end up as savings to somebody. Can't be any other way. There has to be one and the other. And you're going to have government that's going to create a digit and somebody's going to save that digit ultimately. So how do we get government digits to savings? Well, through a very simple mechanism. Okay. 
household income that is disaved equals profit. You cannot have profit unless the household income disaves. It is not possible. Profits are net of cost, and profits end up as what? Savings. Okay? Very simple. Nothing complicated about it. Savings, if not invested back into the productive economy to fund household income for it to be disaved so profit can exist and government is the one that is funding household income you end up with a problem and I'm going to explain what that problem is that in an ecosystem feedback loop between savers and the productive economy, where household income is funded by savers and the saved and profit and then saving in an ecosystem feedback loop. When that doesn't occur, you end up with savers holding on to those dollars and those dollars are not put underneath a mattress those dollars end up in asset classes, stocks, bonds, commodities, and real estate. So what you see is that the stock market will start, and the bonds and everything, all asset classes will start to rise. But at the same time, you're going to start to see that the economy will start to contract. Now think about that. While the CPI is measuring... Inflation is falling. The growth of the economy is not growing as fast, or eventually it will start to atrophy. You will start seeing asset prices rise. Right? There's a drainage that is going on into the productive economy. And there's asset price inflation going on in the savings bubble, as I call it here when the economy starts to contract and savers are not incentivized to invest back into the productive economy and they're getting rewarded in asset price inflations like stocks bonds real estate and commodities then they're going to keep on investing in asset prices when government continues to deficit spend in excess of what the GDP growth is okay because government when they start funding household income to savings it is artificially producing profit now remember if you increase the amount of digits from government, you're not adding value along with those digits. Right? So you're not getting value. You're not seeing economic growth that is proportional to the deficits. That is a default. So what ends up happening is government deficits are backstopping risk for stocks, bonds, uh, real estate, and commodities. And the more they do that, the more that savers are incentivized to go out and invest in asset prices. The less in incentivized they are to fund, to fund investment and household income to be disaved in an ecosystem feedback loop. So you end up with a broken economy where you have asset price inflation and you have deflationary forces on the real economy. And government is pretending that they can print value for a currency and a deficit spend and they call it stimulus and they call it all these different names. But in reality, the only thing they're doing is creating a savings bubble. And remember, savings bubble 
savings to somebody to the five percent top five percent savings to the top five percent means liability is to the 95 percent you can't have one without the other if someone is excessively saving then someone else has liabilities again whether it be private or public debt it doesn't matter add on top of that add on top of that imports when the productive economy is importing is a net importer okay that means that they're exporting dollars to the rest of the world that means those dollars are creating jobs for somebody else not domestically that is deflationary force in the real productive economy so you got savers saving excessively you got the productive economy importing more than they're exporting and you have government trying to offset that by merely printing worthless digits dollars whatever and the mere fact that the government is trying to offset those deflationary forces by pretending that they can print value for the digits that they create they create an economy that starts to falter and falter and the longer they do it the more likely it is that economy is going to implode and that is the problem now no economy is going to work in an ecosystem feedback loop forever it's not possible it's too many moving parts we go through cycles that's fine but you can't keep doing this excessively because if you do eventually the GDP growth starts to shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink and then it starts to atrophy and the more deficits that you pump the more deficits you need to pump and the more deficits you need to pump the more asset price inflation that you get until it implodes because what is happening in the saver side with prices going higher the opposite is occurring into the real economy eventually it snaps now let's take a look at what's going on okay the government is doing something technically illegal the federal the federal reserve cannot fund government but they found a loophole so what they do is they go out into the open market they buy bonds in exchange for reserves it's a, it's an asset swap and people say it's placebo it's not placebo if you reduce the amount of bonds and you increase the amount of do <clears throat> sorry of dollars what ends up happening is you are creating a mismatch so remember when the bond prices rise when the bond prices rise yields fall And when bond prices fall, yields rise. The opposite. When the central bank is funding government through QE, and it's increasing the money supply and reducing the amount of bonds that would have been in existence, and you start to suppress interest rates, when you look at stocks, the earnings yield of stocks, not the PE, not the price to earnings, it's the EP, the earnings to price. If you divide it, you're going to get the earnings yield of the S&P 500. Today, the earnings yield in the S&P 500 is 2.16%. Historically low. Why? Because if you look at interest rates, at are 1.43%. When you artificially bring down bond yields, you make stock yields more attractive. So if stocks were at four percent, and you and you set interest rates to zero, close to it, then four percent earnings yield is much better than almost zero percent bond yield. 
So you force money to flow into stocks. And then stock earnings yields go, as price rises, stocks earnings yields go from 4% to 3%, 2%, right? Isn't that what we see today? Isn't that why we had 33 days of a bear market and stock market, and ever since then all we've been doing is hitting new all-time highs? Right? Real estate is up 24% from a year ago. Right? Why? Because savers are not funding household income to savings. Savers are rather uh, are, are choosing to go and speculate in asset prices rather than invest in the real economy. Eventually, so many dollars piling into stocks, bonds, and real estate and real estate, eventually it's going to end up in commodities as well. When you end up in commodities and you start getting commodity price inflation, okay, you're going to start seeing lumber up 588%. It's dropped since it's 200, whatever it is now, but it's still 200% up from last year. You look at um, steel, you look at oil. Eventually you go to the supermarket, you're paying more. You go to the gas pump, you're paying more. Because of money flows, because money is funneling into commodities. So you end up with high unemployment, relatively high at 6%, and you end up with 5% inflation, and that's stagflation, right? You see how, and, and what about the GDP growth? We've printed $6 trillion in a little over a year, and we still have not grown the economy to where it was previous to COVID. Let's go even further back. Since 2007, when deficits were public debt was $10 trillion, today we've printed an additional $18 trillion, and we've only gotten $3.5 trillion of real GDP growth in 14 years. A horrible return on investment. So when you hear the government is deficit spending to stimulate, they cannot stimulate because government can only bring digits. Government can only add numbers to a yardstick. It doesn't make the yardstick bigger. Government can only create more slices in a pizza pie. The pizza pie is not going to become bigger because there's more slices. You understand? Here's another way to think about it. Okay. Let's say you and I were bidding for a pen. You have $100. I have $100. Government deficit spends gives us each an additional hundred dollars now the most that this pen can go for is two hundred dollars we're not getting more pen we're just simply paying more for it that's price value is the pen so price is what you pay value is what you get why does this matter because i hear a lot of guys and gals telling me that macroeconomics does not matter to the stock market of course it does it always does. You cannot grow revenues, profits without household income to savings. And as long as those profits end up in savings and not reinvested back into the real economy in an ecosystem feedback loop, you end up with exactly what you see. Asset price inflation, commodity inflation, and a shrinking uh, economy. Okay, the fact that the government cannot print value for digits for the currency does not mean that the currency as a whole does not have value, because there's still wealth in the economy. There's still productive output in the economy. But again, it's only more slices in a pizza pie. So I hope this video helped you. I hope you understand why macroeconomics does matter to the, the, the economy. And I want you to understand that this is a very expensive economy. Asset bubble, savings bubble, liabilities to the 95%. Thank you. I hope this video helped you at least tickle your curiosity. Have a great 4th of July and a great summer. Take care. Bye-bye.